everyone, welcome back. This is Ask Your Bishop. Today, uh, we're doing something a little bit different. I have this friend, this acquaintance. I met him at Manti. His name is Jody. He's from Southern Carolina. Northern. He's from Southern Carolina. North Carolina. He's from North Carolina. And he's... Uh, he, he has a heart for the Mormon people, and so he's a long-haul truck driver. He happened to be coming through the state, and I said, what you doing? You want to do a webcast? So, Jody, welcome. Hi, glad to be here. Yeah, and we're, and we're sure excited to, uh, to be able to do this together and just to share the Word of God a little bit. And today's webcast, actually, I was going to, um, I was going to do a review of an interesting conversation I had with three young Mormon missionaries. I bumped into them at the food court in Costco yesterday. I thought it would be interesting to talk about this with Jody because being from Southern Carolina, as Northern Carolina as he is, he, he says if I say Southern, Southern Carolina, I'm cussing. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't cuss on a broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway. Um, I was going to talk about my experience with these missionaries that I bumped into at Costco, and I thought it might be fun to have someone who's outside of the Mormon Beltway share some of their, his experiences uh, or, or impressions of what occurred there. So anyway, Jody, welcome. We're glad to have you. Glad to be here. So here's, here's how the story went down. And, and Jody, if anything pops into your head as we're going along, just... Just jump in and. Well, what what is the name of your YouTube channel? Maybe somebody would want to subscribe. Oh, we we are ask your bishop. We're just okay. ask your bishop. And so yes, come subscribe. We we want as many listeners as we can get. So, and, we, and I've also got a YouTube channel, Disciples of YHWH in Christ, so they can also. Awesome. Okay. I subscribe to that channel as well. All right. Okay. So anyway, I'm, I'm walking into Costco, and I see these three young missionaries sitting at a table. And and when I see these guys, I want to always just be happy and up. Because if we have the gospel of Christ, what else would we be? Well, it says, come to me that I might, might give you rest. Yeah. We would be happy and up, you know. So anyway, I, I walked up to them and introduced myself. I said, hey, guys. May I join you? And they, they were quick to say yes. And, and then I introduced myself, and I think maybe they started to self-doubt whether they should have let me sit down or not. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I was Mormon for 60 years. I rose to high levels of leadership. I was a true believer, and then Jesus worked a miracle in my life. And I asked them, can we talk about the gospel? And they said, sure. And you know, I, I don't know how much Jody and I have in common. We only meet and spend a little bit of time together once in a while. And, but the one thing we have in common is this gospel. And why is it important? Well, because the gospel is everything. And without it, we're, we're lost. There's nothing. There's nothing. So these missionaries, I, I said to them, the gospel, if we have the right gospel, like Jody said, it's everything. It leads us to the right God. It, that's the God that provides salvation. Everything is right when we live by the right gospel. And when we don't, who knows where it will lead us? Well, I guess we know where it will lead us. It will lead us to hell. And these missionaries, they agreed that it's important to have the right gospel. And I asked them, where is that gospel to find? <laughs> they what, didn't, what did they say? They didn't know. They had no clue. And what, you, what, they're Mormon missionaries and they had no clue where the gospel was found? They are Mormon missionaries sent out to teach the world the gospel of Jesus Christ, or that's their verbiage, and they can't tell you where the gospel is found. So I took them to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and I paraphrased because I was just going in to buy a Costco pizza. And... I oftentimes don't carry my Bible when I do those worldly things. Put the Bible up here and you won't have to carry it. Oh, hush. You Northern Carolinas for fruitcakes. <laughs> <I> <laughs> so anyway, I paraphrased. And I paraphrased from the King James because that's the, that's the Bible that is most important to the Mormons. And I said, 
Paul gave us this, and he said, I declare unto you the gospel. And, and I stopped and paused for a minute, and I said, when an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, uses the word declare, wise men, listen. And so it's important that we listen to this. He said, I declare unto you the gospel. Then he said, upon which you stand. And I, I've thought about that a lot. Do we stand on this gospel? Oh, absolutely. Do we? Yeah, it's, it's the hill we die on. It's, my flag is planted firmly upon the hill of the gospel, which, by the way, is actually the rock. But, uh, you know, my, my flag is planted there. I draw a line in the sand. I won't be moved. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is, as Jody said, everything. Without it, we are nothing. And then the next question is, well, then why is it even important? And Paul answered that with his next line. He's pretty smart, old Paul. He said, by which we are saved. It's by this gospel that we are saved. Now, thankfully, there's lots of other gospels that can save us too, right? Well, not really. Uh, <laughs> there's only one gospel that can save you, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought it was the new woke thing where any gospel, any God will get you there. <laughs> well, no, I'm afraid that's uh, not right. That's not right. So anyway, we, we continued, and, and Paul said, there's three things you have to keep in memory. First of all, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. So in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, Jesus died for us. He paid the price for our sins, and he paid a price that we couldn't pay. And there's a lot of reasons why we can't, because first of all, our sin is bigger than our ability to pay. But secondly, I'm not sure I can remember the last time I sinned mm. or the first time. How do I pay for those? Secondly, Paul said... He was buried, and lastly, he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And that's pretty amazing, too, because there have been a lot of religious leaders along the way who have died, but only one had the power within himself to raise himself from the dead. And that's our right. king and our Lord. And, and then with these missionaries, I said, isn't that a beautiful thing? Isn't that an incredibly wonderful thing? that Christ did for us what we can't do for ourselves. What did they say? They agreed. Hey! Yeah, we're, so, so right now we're in lockstep with these guys. We're like this, you know. They, they agreed, and I said, and isn't it beautiful that this gospel is so clearly laid out, so simple, that a third grader can comprehend it? And they said, yeah. And I said, and you know, right, what gospel means? And they knew, what does it mean? <laughs> It means good news. They knew that. And so <laughs> we're just in lockstep. And then I said, but wait. I said, are you aware of where your church is to find the gospel? And see, it's in a, it's in a manual called uh, True to the Faith. It's in the Gospel Topics essays at uh, churchofjesuschrist.org, the official Mormon website. Now remember, the gospel says three things, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, he rose again on the third day. This is the gospel as defined by the Mormon church. If you hear any differences, you might want to shout it out. It says, in its fullness, the gospel includes all the doctrines, principles, laws, ordinance, covenants necessary for us to be exalted in the celestial kingdom. Pretty much the same, right? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we already discussed that the biblical gospel is everything that Jesus does for us. But this one is everything that the Mormon people have to do for their Mormon Jesus. Mm -hmm. They have to keep and follow every doctrine and principle and law and ordinance and covenant necessary for them to be exalted in the celestial kingdom. That means, by the way, to become a god in Mormon lingo. So I looked at these three guys, looked at these three guys, and I could see that they were they were working hard. How are we gonna how are we gonna answer this? And I didn't give them a chance. I said, so if I give you a pencil and paper right now, 
<laughs> Can you make a list for me of every doctrine, principle, law, covenant, and ordinance? I'm sure they all agreed to give you that, and they all wrote it down, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they looked at me and went, Because, eh? you know, think about what this is. We have 600 and some commandments right. in the law of Moses. We have commandments given by Jesus, and, and we've been called to do certain things by the apostles in the New Testament, plus the Mormon leaders. They've added their own, you know, collection of things. Most people can't actually list the Ten Commandments without peeking. Right? Right. Ten, and so now we're talking about a thousand or more of these doctrines, principles, laws, ordinances. It's a mess. They said, I can't write it down. Uh-oh. So I said... Sounds, you, sounds like they're in trouble now. Oh, well, this next question got them. I said, so if, you're, if your gospel is a list of doctrines, principles, laws, ordinances, covenants so long that you can't write it down, how can you know that you're living it? And what did they say? I'm saying it right now. Oh. You're not saying nothing, though. It's kind of a mouth open. Uh-oh. And then the next question, and I'd love to ask this question of our LDS people. I said, you know, so if your gospel is a list of doctrines, principles, laws, ordinance, covenants, so long that you can't write it down and can't know you're living it, how is that good news? That don't sound like good news to me. No, it's terrible news. Because... You know, it's, it's crazy. You, the, the Pharisees asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And he answered, and he said, first, that you love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, strength, and soul, or however it was said. And secondly, that you love your neighbors yourself. Who can live that? I don't, do you? You know, and the thing that's crazy is even if you live a relatively holy life, you're really trying to follow God and you're trying, well... If we have even one selfish thought, one minute of anger or aggression toward the guy that cuts you off, which never happens to long haul truck drivers, I'm sure. Just every day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> every hour maybe. Yeah. But if you have if you have a thought, if you're self centered or the second you start thinking of yourself, even if you don't act on it. You're replacing. You're, you're you're loving yourself more than God well, exactly, and, and you more know, than your neighbor. Sometimes I get mad and say something I shouldn't, and that's like, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> right, right. And so the the thing is, we can't we can't live that. We will never live that. It's impossible to live that. And so the only possibility is that we cling to this gospel that is true, and let Christ pay the debt that we so desperately need paid and are so... Well, Christ paid it all, so I don't have to get out here and earn it because Christ has already paid it. Yeah, and even if you did have to get out and earn it, you couldn't. I couldn't do it. I mean, couldn't do it. if I owed $100 trillion right now, I mean, it would be utterly impossible for me to pay it. Right, right. And your debt to God is way bigger than $100 trillion. Oh, it, absolutely bigger. So now, as, as is the custom at Ask Your Bishop, we have a question. We want you to take it to your bishop. Take him the definition of the gospel as described in 1 Corinthians 15, the first four verses. Take that to him and then take this other one in its fullness, the gospel includes all the doctrines, principles, laws, ordinances, and covenants necessary to be exalted in the celestial kingdom. Take them both to your bishop and ask him two questions. First, ask him. Two questions. What is the good news in this one? Which gospel definition is good news for us who are sinners? And number two, number two, would you prefer to trust in Jesus who gave Paul these words? Or would you prefer to trust in men who wrote this gospel down? And by the way, I've researched the gospel of the Mormon church. This isn't the only one. They have many, many gospels and they've changed the definition over the years. Would you prefer to trust 
to build your house on the sand, on the shifting sands of changing doctrine, or do you want to build it on the hill that is the place where we make our stand? And that hill is the rock, Jesus right. and Christ. If you build it on the rock, who is Jesus Christ, then it won't fall. Won't move. Won't shut. It'll be unshakable. <laughs> unshakable, man. Oh, unshakable, man. Hey, everybody, we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.